Kevin Verpale from Chameleon Solar has joined us to discuss the principle called Pretty Pleases, expanding the material aesthetics of solar energy. Um, and we're here underneath the roof that you helped uh, create and design. Can you, to begin with, explain us what is so special about the solar panels that are above us? Uh, well, there are several special ways in which it's been uh, applied. So we have uh, colored solar panels. Uh, the different colors have different powers usually in colored solar panels, uh, but we were able to even out the power for every color that's been applied. Uh, the solar panels uh, are actually overlapping each other, which is usually a problem. Um, but we managed to fix that by changing the position of the solar cells in the panel. Um, but primarily the fact that the solar panels don't look like solar panels, I think is the most, uh, most special part of the PV part anyway. And uh, people are able to go up really close. And what are they able to see when they, when they go up close? Uh, so I think this is what's really cool is that you have from different distances, you get different experiences of the, of the solar panel. So up close, you can see all these little hexagons all over the panel uh, and they're colored. Um, they, the hexagons themselves don't actually generate any solar energy. They uh, are just reflecting light in a specific color. Uh, and everything around the hexagons um, is generating energy and some light can pass through as well. So you see this nice little, uh, all of these little shapes. And when you stand far away, uh, all of the shapes tend to blur into one bigger color. Uh, and that's basically the uh, color blast technique. So that's what makes it really cool. Uh, the nice thing is that even from close up, you don't actually see that it's a solar panel. Lots of people don't believe it. So, yeah. 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 And um, your panels, of course, are, are, are used for building integrated photovoltaics, right? Yeah. Um, what are the challenges in, in, in that area? Can you explain us like what you run into when you work together with, uh, with architects or project developers? There are a lot of challenges in the building industry for solar energy in general. Um, it starts with the, the fact that an architect doesn't want to have to make sacrifices for um, including solar panels in the facade specifically, um, which makes total sense. You don't need, you shouldn't have to sacrifice aesthetics to become sustainable. Uh, so the first step in the process is always finding out which sizes are um, useful for the vision of the architect, um, but also uh, good for fitting in solar cells. And this is kind of uh, this back and forth negotiation which happens uh, where we try to find uh, the best way to accomplish the vision of the architect. Uh, the next step is really what can we do with uh, color? We don't want uh, to live in this very technical uh, building necessarily. Sometimes people do want that. Um, and so then we start talking about how can we achieve um, the aesthetics from more of a color point of view of like looking at the building, what is it supposed to look like? Um, and then we start looking at Pantone colors, RAL colors, all these different color codes, which need to be translated to the PV module uh, in the highest power possible. Uh, so that's like the, the second challenge. Uh, some some solar panel technologies for color, uh, some coloring technologies for solar panels have more options for color than others, uh, but they also have sometimes more restrictions uh, for the power that they generate. So this is once again, uh, kind of like a juggling game where you have to um, juggle power, aesthetics and price. Uh, these are the three things that you're kind of always juggling with. Sounds like you're kind of a solar magician uh, juggling with all these different elements. <laughs> Yeah, now the sun is actually shining on the pavilion and what I really like is that when the sun sh shines on it, it becomes so much brighter and stuff. It's uh, super nice. My question is like, why do you, do you think it's so important to focus on this aesthetic qualities? Um, I've seen with... So I'm, a, I'm barely still an 80s child and I've seen a lot of ugly technologies that have only become popular because we made them desirable. Uh, so I think mobile phones is an excellent example and a more recent example might actually be electric cars is once we make some something that's very technological and actually very stuffy and boring once we make it something that is beautiful something that that can inspire somebody that's when the mass will take it up and want to implement it and um, 
it's such a shame that something as democratic of, uh, of an energy source as the sun becomes uh, something that's forced upon people where we're trying to make people use it and that um, even my neighbors are, are talking to me about, yeah, I'm gonna have to get solar panels. It would be great if it's something that people want to apply. Um, and, and that's something for me is very special when an architect comes by and they, they sit down, they see the options that are available and they get emotional about the fact that for the first time they can actually design a beautiful building and have it generate energy. And, and yeah, I think that that's what's really amazing. And that's how we're going to get to a future that is really sustainable by making it desirable. So the power of beauty, basically. Yeah. And uh, maybe, maybe people will say like, please in my backyard, instead of like, not in my backyard, please, because that's what's really needed. Uh, we've actually done some installations in the backyard where people have said, uh, oh, please, I, I would like to have uh, I have this hedge in the garden and I don't really like the hedge, but I want to make it something green and beautiful that's next to the hedge. Um, and so then we have a, an installation somewhere with kind of an, a green inspired artwork in the garden that generates energy because they didn't want to put it on their rooftop just yet. Um, so yeah, pretty does please, definitely. So you're saying now that you can basically print whatever, you can print Mona Lisa or something. Will we go into the Van Gogh Museum or like other museum that we look at printed solar panels as a form of art, you think? I, I really hope so. Uh, the, the nice thing about uh, solar panels as a medium is that you, there is always um, some translation necessary. You have to take um, power into account when you are designing to a degree and color. And so it's a very unique medium. And I do believe that it has a place in the art world of finding out where uh, the beauty lies in designing with solar panels because it's just a different medium than a canvas uh, or a photograph. Uh, it's very different. And I hope artists will take it up. And I hope they don't get the same question as like as looking at the solar panel. But like, yeah, <laughs> you said like, what would the payback time of this painting would be, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's the first question everyone asks is, uh, oh, um, how much energy is this uh, pavilion generating versus uh, a, a solar field? Um, and I just wonder how many people want to stand underneath the solar field and uh, have a drink there or, or, or meet up with in a community in such a place. So it really is, uh, it, we have to start thinking about the solar panel in a different way uh, if we want to make it successful. Yes, it can be a great source of energy and we can use it as a pure energy generator and it should be used that way as well. Um, but when we implement it in places where we're actually replacing a material, uh, so instead of a facade or uh, instead of an artwork on the side of a building, which is a big thing that we do in the Netherlands, we put art on the sides of buildings. Uh, why, why aren't we making those generate energy? There's, there's no need for it not to do so. So we don't need to think about um, how much power is it generating? How much uh, watt peak does it have versus a standard panel? We should be comparing it to the material it replaces. How much energy is, uh, is this uh, design on the side of the building generating right now? Zero. So as soon as we make it a solar panel, it's already infinitely better. Yeah, yeah amazing. Kevin, thank you so much for <laughs> anyway contacted us for like, hey, how can we collaborate and how can we do this? Because you're your, uh, yeah. your way of doing this is so special and it's like uh, coming from the industry, which is like the focus so different, talking to designers and architects and being so open here, it's amazing. So uh, thank you for this collaboration and be part of the movement. You're a super strong force, so um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, both of you. Uh, yeah, you inspired me before I even met you. So uh, <laughs> this was a, a great opportunity for us. And uh, as soon as I saw the Solar Biennale was a thing, I just had to be a part of it. So. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.